Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Asia Group 2021 virtual talk. So the topic of my presentation is algebraic adversaries in the universal compatibility framework. And it is joint work with Michel Abdallah, Manuel Barbosa, Jonathan Katz, and Julian Loss. So here's an outline of my talk. Um, our work combines two powerful models in cryptography. One is the universal compatibility or UC framework, and the other is the um, algebraic group model or AGM. So I will first provide a brief overview of these two um, existing models. And then I will introduce our UC AGM framework, uh, which defines AGM within UC. And finally, I will showcase two applications of our new model. So one is the um, Cho and Orlandi OT protocol, and the other is um, a number of password authenticated key exchange protocols. Um, so now let's start uh, the first part of the talk, which is the modeling. Um, so universal compatibility framework, or UC, was proposed by Carnegie in 2001. And it is um, the uh, strongest security definition framework in multi-party computation in the sense that um, it supports arbitrary protocol composition. It follows the um, real ideal uh, paradigm in MPC. So uh, the figures here are copied directly from Carnegie's original paper on UC. The left-hand side um, is a real world where the uh, M parties are uh, mu one to mu M in the protocol pi. And um, in an execution of the protocol pi, there are two additional parties, the adversary A and um, the environment E. And these two parties can communicate with the protocol parties. And the right-hand side is the um, ideal world. So let me stress that the protocol in the ideal world um, can, be, uh, can be any protocol, but usually uh, the ideal protocol consists of a single ideal functionality f um, and m dummy parties uh, denoted d1 to dm here. So now we say that um, the protocol pi uc emulates the um, ideal functionality f if for any adversary in the real world there is an adversary in the, uh, in the ideal world which simulates the environment's view. Um, so one, one reason why UC is so powerful is the composition theorem, which says that if protocol pi UC emulates um, ideal functionality f, then uh, a protocol which has pi as a subprotocol also UC emulates the protocol with pi replaced with f. So what does this mean? So this allows for using the ideal functionality instead of a UC secure protocol within a higher level protocol. The um, algebraic group model uh, was introduced much later. Uh, it was formalized by uh, Forschbauer, Kills, and Loss in 2018. So it sits between the um, standard model and the general group model. So an algebraic adversary, um, whenever it outputs, a group element, it must also output its so-called algebraic representation, which explains how this group element is computed from the adversary's view. So that is, um, so suppose the adversary's view consists of group elements x1 to xn. Then whenever the adversary outputs a, another group element y, it must also output integers lambda1 to lambda n on an auxiliary in uh, on an auxiliary type called the algebraic type such that y is equal to x1 to the power of lambda 1 times blah 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 times xn to the power of lambda n so this is exactly how y is computed from the adversary's view so the um, agm mainly has two types of applications um, the first one is it, it allows for either proving a stronger security notion or giving a tighter security bound for some schemes. Um, one notable example is that in, in the AGM, you can avoid rewinding. 
So you can give a simple and tighter proof for, say, the Schnorr signature. Um, uh, another thing is AGM enables um, security proof for some schemes that are unlikely or perhaps even impossible uh, to prove otherwise, such as some blind signature uh, scheme. However, up to now, um, there have been no applications of the AGM that is in the simulation-based setting, which severely limits its use in multi-party computation. <clears throat> so our work combines UC and AGM, and we propose the UC AGM framework. Um, here we have two key issues to tackle. So the first one is um, which parties need to be algebraic? In the um, original AGM, there's only a single adversary, and we require that this adversary is algebraic. But in UC, there are actually three adversarial parties in a security definition. Um, so there's the adversary A in the real world, there's a simulator S in the ideal world, and there's an environment E which tries to distinguish between the real world and the ideal world. <clears throat> so we require that um, all these three parties to be, uh, to be algebraic in UC AGM. And then we need to decide um, what exactly it means to say that a party is algebraic. So recall that, recall that in the original AGM, this means that the adversary must write the algebraic representation whenever it sends a group element to some party. Um, so here, when the adversary or the simulator communicates with a protocol party, uh, we require the same thing. However, um, in order to make the composition theorem work, uh, we, need to, uh, we need something additional. And in particular, we need to place some restriction on the environment as well. So we require that the environment needs to send the algebraic representation directly to the adversary. So well, why do we require this? Intuitively, this is because we want the simulator to receive the algebraic representations from all adversarial parties, uh, both the adversary and the environment. But the simulator cannot run the environment in UC. It can only run the adversary. So that is why we require that uh, the environment sends the algebraic representation to the adversary. So in this way, the simulator can directly see um, the algebraic representations from the environment. Um, for other communications, uh, namely the adversary sending uh, a group element to the environment, or the simulator sending a group element to the environment, or the environment sends some uh, group elements to the protocol parties. So in all these cases, uh, we don't require them to send the algebraic representations. So here is a graphic illustration of what I just said. Um, the left-hand side is the real world, where the protocol role consists of um, n parties uh, as well as uh, an ideal functionality f. In an execution of role, um, the communication channels where the parties must be have algebraically are in blue. So again, the uh, the environment must uh, uh, must be algebraic while sending some group elements to the adversary, and the adversary must behave uh, algebraically when sending uh, some group elements to the protocol parties, uh, including the ideal functionality. <clears throat> um, on the right-hand side is the um, ideal world with the ideal protocol role. So usually a role is uh, an ideal functionality. So again, the requirements of algebraic parties are in blue. So having defined the exact meanings of um, algebraic adversaries, uh, we can now define UC AGM emulation, which is the same with UC emulation, except that all adversarial parties must be algebraic. And finally, we also prove that the composition uh, theorem still holds in this setting. So this shows that um, our uh, UC AGM framework is as useful as the original UC framework. 
So now let's see some uh, applications of our new um, UCAGM framework. So the first one is the Cho and Orlandi um, OT protocol. So recall that a one to OT protocol is as follows. So a sender has two messages, um, M0 and M1, and a receiver has a bit B. Um, at the end of their interaction, the receiver learns one of the messages, MB, but not the other message, and the sender doesn't learn which message was sent. <clears throat> um, in 2015, um, Cho and Orlandi wrote a paper with the title, The Simplest Protocol for Oblivious Transport, in which they um, proposed a protocol and they claimed it to be UC secure, even in the adaptive corruption setting. So this protocol um, soon gained much attention and the most efficient implementations nowadays are based on this protocol. However, in 2017, there were two papers showing three flaws um, in, in, the, uh, in, in the original security proof uh, in the Cho Orlandi paper. Uh, there's even an impossibility result which shows that um, a UC proof is impossible assuming that a certain assumption holds. So this essentially leaves the protocol with no, secu uh, no security proof at all. And we do the best thing possible, which is to show that the protocol is actually UC AGM secure. And this gives the first security proof of the Cho and Orlandi protocol. So let's see at a very high level how we overcome the difficulties um, in, in, in the original proof. So here's the protocol. Um, the receiver first sends a random group element A to the sender. And the sender then sends back a group element uh, which, is, uh, which may or may not be a one-time pad encryption of this A, um, depending, on, uh, depending on the, um, the, the bit B. And then uh, the, uh, the receiver then derives keys from uh, the protocol transcript A and U and encrypts its messages M0 and M1 uh, under these two keys. And it sends the, uh, the ciphertext uh, to the receiver. The receiver can also, uh, can also derive the correct key KB. And thus it can uh, decrypt the um, correct ciphertext and gets a message. The other message uh, cannot be decrypted and remains unknown from the receiver's view. <clears throat> so now, if you want to prove the security of this protocol, um, the problematic uh, scenario is the sender is uh, statically corrupted and the receiver is adaptively corrupted. So what will, uh, what will happen here? So in, uh, in this case, when the receiver is corrupted, the simulator must send the um, random nonce x to the adversary, which explains how the group element u uh, is computed. So this requires the simulator to know the discrete log of the group element a, uh, which is y. But the simulator has no way to know this y, so it is stuck. But in the, uh, in, in the AGM, so this issue can be trivially resolved because an algebraic adversary must write this y on its algebraic type. So this is because a y is how the group element a is computed. And therefore, this y can be seen by the simulator. And then the simulator can compute x accordingly. So in this way, we can uh, bypass the problem and manage to prove the um, UC security of Cho and Orlandi OT protocol. Um, here's another uh, example, the SPEC1, SPEC2, and CPACE um, password authenticated key exchange protocols. So a password authenticated key exchange protocol or PAIC um, allows two parties to establish a shared secret key uh, in the following setting. Only a low entropy password is agreed on in advance. And there's, uh, there's no authenticated channel. So this is, mm, uh, this is different from many protocols in MPC. Um, in recent years, uh, Pike gained much attention. And uh, last year, CFRG 
held a competition for the standardization of take protocols. And um, two protocols are made it to the finalists. So one is aspect two and the other is C phase. So eventually C phase was selected and standardized. So however, um, the landscape of both protocols UC security analysis has been uh, kind of bumpy. So there are certain critical difficulties that render both of them unlikely to be UC secure uh, with respect to the standard UC functionality for Pipe. Um, recently, uh, in, in, in last year and also this year, uh, there have been some work. Uh, by the way, I think uh, one of these works uh, also appeared in this year's Asia book. So this work uh, proved that both aspect two and C pipes are UC secure with respect to a relaxed UC functionality. But the, uh, the security guarantee of this relaxed functionality is kind of weak. And in particular, it is not very clear whether this functionality implies perfect forward sequencing, which is an important uh, security notion, uh, security property for PEG. And again, here, we managed to prove that both aspect two and C pipes are UC AGM secure with respect to the standard UC functionality for PEG. Um, as a bonus, we also proved that a variant called aspect one uh, so this aspect one has better security under some side channel attacks. So we prove that aspect one is also UC AGM secure. And this is actually the first security proof ever for aspect one. So let's see um, how we managed to uh, prove the UC security uh, of these protocols. Here's the um, aspect protocol. Um, it is essentially a hashed uh, Diffie-Hellman where the protocol messages are encrypted under the password using the one-time path. So the, um, the difference between aspect one and aspect two is whether the password is part of the hash input while deriving the session key. So if you want to prove the UC security, um, the UC simulator needs to extract the password from the protocol transcript and send this um, extracted password to the Pike functionality. But if you look at what the transcript is, so actually the transcript is a Peterson commitment to the password. So the password is information theoretically hidden. Um, and there's simply no way for the simulator to extract it. However, if we work in the AGM, then the adversary has to explain how the, uh, sorry, how the protocol messages, uh, say the group element X is computed, which requires the adversary to write the password uh, on its algebraic type, which in turn uh, can be seen uh, by the UC simulator. So again, uh, the, the UC simulator um, can, can trivially see the, the critical uh, information which allows it to complete uh, the UC simulation. So note that this uh, entire thing has nothing to do with uh, what happens after the protocol, uh, after the protocol messages are sent. And the, the differences between aspect one and two only appear uh, in what the protocol parties do uh, afterwards. So therefore aspect one can be proven secure in the UC AGM um, in essentially the same manner. And C pipes can be proven UC AGM secure as well using a similar trick. Um, if you are interested, then you can check our paper. <clears throat> so in summary, we um, make three major contributions. So first we propose that, um, the UC AGM framework, which models an algebraic adversary in UC. And then we showcase two applications. So for Chow and Orlandi OT protocol, it cannot be proven secure uh, in standard UC because of the um, impossibility result. For aspect one, there's no impossibility result, but it is also unlikely to be UC secure. For aspect two and C pipes, 
it only has a weak security guarantee in UC. So we, for all the above protocols, we prove that they are UC AGM secure. So for Chuan or any OT on aspect one, we prove something that uh, what, what we prove the UC security in the AGM, uh, what, which were unknown previously. And for aspect two and C pace, we achieve um, stronger security notion. Okay, so this is the uh, end of my talk. Um, our paper is on ePrint, so you can you can check it out if you are interested. Thank you very much. <laughs>